Hey everybody, James here to talk about Ragnar Cape Cod 2016. This is what's going on. This is the plan as we head into just four months left to prepare. First of all, transportation. We planned ahead. We've got 12 passenger vans um, that will look very similar to this. I pulled this picture off the Enterprise website. So we'll get these. We'll mark them up. I asked you for your running nicknames. We'll put those on the side. We'll put little boxes on there for you to mark off your legs as we run them. We'll throw whatever else kind of decorations we want to do on the van and we do that with these special pens that clean off really easily just a little bit of water and a paper towel and you're good to go so here's Tawny as she just finished her first leg from any Ragnar ever feeling like quite the badass which of course she was that was with the team Orange is the New Dax so we did a little play on Orange is the New Black because we were running Ragnar at Adirondacks and we had a lot of fun with that team um, you can see we dressed up in jumpsuits and got some pictures with different police officers along the way as we found them. We'd just pull over off the side of the road and be like, hey, can we take your picture with you? And um, the police uh, at this particular event were in a pretty good mood anyway. You know, Ragnar's a fun thing to do and you see a bunch of goofy runners and they're having a good time. And so uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Anyhow, for us, we're going to meet, uh, most of us are going to get together where um, half the team works, which is at Electric Insurance Company. I've already talked to the facilities guy. We have um, authorization to park in the back corner. He's got a video camera that captures that part of the parking lot. I'll send you this information as we get closer, but just so you know, we've got that planned out. So from that standpoint, you know, we'll hop into your prospective vans and take off and head down uh, from Beverly, Massachusetts down to Hull. We'll make a stop in Boston along the way. I know a few of you are in downtown Boston or very nearby, so as we get closer, we'll figure out a good spot for us to coordinate and meet to pick up uh, those of you who are closer to that area. And then once we get down to Hull, we'll prove that we're safe. We'll show them our vests. We show them our lights. We collect our safety flags, watch the video, and get ready to run. So between now and then, training. I've given you your leg assignments. Those should be good to go, but just be aware that, you know, something might happen uh, between now and race day. So what happened last year was there was some unexpected construction. There had been some flooding. They had to move a couple of the transition area. And so depending on if they move the transition area further up the course or closer to the one before it, you might find a leg a little longer, a little, little shorter than you thought of. Um, shouldn't be too big of a deal. For now, really all you need to worry about is can I run three or four miles comfortably? So your goal over the next couple of weeks is to get to where you can do that. You don't have to be fast, just breathing well. Um, February, let's get it up to five or six miles and then March, April, you're going to want to run a couple of two a days. And basically that's just two runs on the same day with an eight or ten hour break in between. Ragnar, you really get out of it what you put into it. So if you put in a two a day and you feel like it's tougher than you expected, do that in March, you've still got plenty of time to do it once or twice more so that by the time you get to Ragnar in May that you're feeling pretty good. So if you're feeling nervous, if you need help with the training plan, let me know and I can help you out with that. And if right now you're injured, and I know we got a couple of people on the team who are, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we are a team built for fun. We're not a team built for speed. So take care of yourself and ease into it. We've got lots of time between now and Ragnar. Okay, van supplies. I'm going to supply a couple of blinking lights, a couple of headlamps, first aid kit, water, van markers. Each van is on its own in terms of things like paper towels, if you want to bring toilet paper, just in case the port john gets a little over... <clears throat> overused. Um, sport drinks, snack, the stick, self-massage kind of stuff, a power supply or charging station for your phones and or GPS watches. Um, changing solution, Van 2, I own a little pop-up thing that it makes it easier to get changed in and out of your different running gear. Um, maybe one ice chest for each van so that you can have something cold to drink. So I'll be looking for the quartermaster for each of the two vans to coordinate that stuff. Stuff you'll want to have, toothbrush, toothpaste, spending money, um, any food you like to run with, whether that's gels or blocks or trail mix, whatever. Um, some van snacks, not too much. Um, that goes back to the spending money. A lot of the transition areas will have local groups that are selling hot, fresh food. Um, bring a water bottle. I mentioned that I'd have water in the van. I put about six gallons in each van, and you can top off 
throughout the weekend. A large beach towel is really handy to have. You come off the road at night and you're a little bit cold, but your teammates meet you at the transition area and they brought your beach towel and you can wrap up in it. It feels pretty good. Um, you're going to want a sleeping bag for over, for your nap overnight, whether you're sleeping in the van or um, outdoors, which is what I usually do, or inside one of the schools at the transition areas. Um, having a sleeping bag to roll up in is going to be great. Travel pillow, it's up to you. Flashlight, good to have. I'm going to provide a packing list closer to the race, so don't need to take notes, and you don't need to try to copy this down, but just, just be aware that you're going to get something that looks pretty close to this, saying these are the things, just check them off as you throw them into your duffel bag. Running gear, I recommend three sets of running wear. Put them all in get one gallon Ziploc bag, so an outfit, outfit per bag. And then after you run a leg, you stow your sweaty gear in the plastic bag, seal it up, and it keeps your duffel and the van smelling much better. Um, think high visibility for your outfit that you'll wear at night, including the safety vest. Um, optional would be things like fresh shoes or a bib holder. It's like a belt that you wear around your right waist that holds your bib, or if you like compression wear for after you run to help you recover. Um, Runner's World just recently came out with something that said compression gear works if you believe it works. Well, I believe it works, so I like it. <laughs> your results may vary. From a safety gear standpoint, when you're outside the van at night, you've got to have a blinking tail light. Again, I'll provide two per van. If you have your own, bring it. Um, you've got to have a headlamp. Again, I provide two per van. If sharing a sweaty headlamp doesn't sound like your cup of tea, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, grab a headlamp. They're like $15. Um, Ragnar is going to provide us with a couple of crossing flags. So those are just those orange flags on a stick that somebody will wave anytime you're crossing the street. So, for example, if I'm out running a 10-mile leg and I have arranged with my van to stop at mile 5 and bring me water and you need to cross the street, you just got to wave the flags while you're crossing the street. And then your safety vest for at night. Also, consider an ID vest, uh, bracelet. I wear one of these. Claire likes it. She feels better knowing that her cell phone is on my wrist, so if something happens to me, then she's going to get a phone call. It's got my drug allergy on there as well. So they're not very much money. Um, as a runner, it's something that you should consider having. So the safety vest, again, it's got to be a vest, which means it's got to have reflective material at the shoulders and at the waist. Um, so here's three examples of reflective vests that Ragnar says, yes, these are good, and three examples of things that Ragnar says, no, this does not work. So even if you have one of those really super reflective Nike jackets, it's not approved. Um, doesn't matter that you dropped a ton of cash on it and that it's brighter than a safety vest. you got to have the safety vest. Everybody has to have their own. Um, you can spend as little as six or seven bucks at Home Depot. Um, personally, I have the Amphipod without the lights, and then you can spend and a lot more. Like here's an example of the Knox Gear Tracer, which has this fiber optic cable that goes up and down the sides of your body. Um, if you buy something like the Knox Gear Tracer, just make sure you get the one that has the shoulder bands, because again, if there's no reflective material at the shoulder, Ragnar does not consider it a safety vest. Okay, and I'm going to finish up with a sample of the artwork that we're working on right now for our shirts. So, um, with the kind of Ragnar Hazard logo and Road Hazards underneath that. So this is what we're looking at for the sweatshirts. I have not decided on a color. I will bring you into that decision um, as we get a little closer. I have been looking at custom ink but wasn't super happy with the first sample that they sent me so they're sending me a second sample. If that's good then we'll go with it. If not, a couple of you have given me ideas on Facebook of some other places that I might try. So anyhow, just wanted to share that with you so you have an idea which way we're headed. So that's it. Thanks very much. Um, leave a comment um, or send me an email if you have any questions and I look forward to running with you in just a few months. Take care everyone.